promised myself I wouldn't get emotional, but... Mm, yeah, well, good luck, J-Lo. Fat chance, Jenny from the block, not conveying raw human emotion from those soulful, uh, expressionful <laughs> eyes of yours and those uh, shiny cheeks. It looks like your woman what does your uh, cha-cha has run over you with the floor buffer again. I'm only kidding, she probably doesn't employ any uh, Hispanics. After all, she's a very good judge of character. Probably doesn't trust them around all of her rocks. They'd be fooled by them rocks. She don't want no made in Manhattan situation on her hand. You know, uh, these uh, big booty Latina women getting ideas above their station. No, uh, I think a, a, a docile, obsequious Filipina is more, uh, is more J-Lo style. You're daft racist. Get your jigsaw looking ass out of here. Who's Daniel Boland? Oh, Daniel Boland, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? You know what? You know what? No, I don't know. Why don't you tell us? Tell us, Jennifer, of the block. Taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. Getting from the block. More like Lady Genevieve of the gated community. <laughs> Got her. You know what? You know what? I want to play a game. We should be emotional. We should be upset. We should be scared and outraged. We should. Yeah, well, if I were you, I'd be getting pretty uh, emotional and scared if I was having to think about what's going to happen to me in lesbian prison. Because you know full well that everyone's going through your decades-long relationship and subsequent friendship, you know. Uh, you're <laughs> they're going through it with a fine-tooth comb, so to speak. Your very long, abnormally long attachment to... Head of Traffic Control himself, Sean Puffy Combs. We should be emotional. We should be upset. We should be scared and outraged. We should. Calm down, dear. These aren't real fish. So another day and another celebrity endorsement for one of the US presidential candidates. And I've got to say, when is this going to stop? I've been making videos now for the last couple of months about these celebrity endorsements. I, I looked at Kamala being endorsed by Meryl Streep and Julia Roberts and uh, Oprah in the town hall, town hall thing that she did. And you just stepped into your power? In my last video, we looked at Tony Hinchcliffe uh, embarrassing himself with his cringe edgelord jokes. Embarrassing Donald Trump, embarrassing the Republican Party with his edgy edgelord jokes about Puerto Rico. And uh, in the process, frightening those poor Democrats half to death. A comedian who offered unfunny, racist, cringeworthy jokes. Basically calling Puerto Ricans trash the most repulsive racial jokes about latinos disgusting and and hateful so incredibly crude frankly just too x-rated to play here extremely vile so-called jokes and i'm just wondering as i've said in many videos now at what point are these celebrities and the political parties when are they all going to realize that this benefits nobody the celebrities alienate half of the world by siding, by taking a side in this political election, this global event, and the political parties just look cringe and out of touch. I have no idea who he is. Somebody said there was a comedian that joked about Puerto Rico or something, and I have no idea who he is. Never saw him, never heard of him and don't want to hear of them. Anyway, today we're focusing on J-Lo, and this is really, I mean, she is just the worst. She really is terrible. Why on earth anyone would think that J-Lo would help to convince people to vote for Kamala? I, I mean, it's insane. I could be completely wrong, but isn't J-Lo kind of hated by everyone? A little bit. What is the ulterior motive for these celebrities? I can only think it's like pure narcissism. They want to be involved in the US elections. They see that Everyone's talking about the US elections, so they have to insert themselves in some way. All of these washed up pop stars and actors, it's so, what, uh, uh, it, you just have to ban them from your rallies. Get rid of them, they're not helping.
No. Buenas noches, Las Vegas. And he speaks Mexican. That's weird. You are the ones who are going to send the message that Nevada is Harris country. Nevada is Harris country. J-Lo, I'm very disappointed, uh, Jenny from the block, because uh, that's exactly the kind of dangerous rhetoric which nearly cost Jussie Smollett his life. You know, on your head it be, Jennifer, if uh, some city slicker, some finance bro on a boys weekend in Vegas gets his head kicked in by a rogue faction of uh, white dudes for Harris and their wife's boyfriends. Ha, gotcha. You know, when I started in TV and film, I could get roles playing the maid or the loudmouth Latina. Mm, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, I've got to be honest, if I was your agent at the time, I would have uh, I would have been saying to all the producers, uh, she can play a uh, maid. Uh, do you need a loudmouth Latina in, uh, in this production? It's the part you were born to play, baby. But I knew I had more to offer. I would have been telling you, you, you know, you've exceeded expectations once you got the gig as uh, one of the fly girls on uh, In Living Color. Or certainly when you became one of Janet Jackson's backup dancers. But... Oh no, along came a white knight to rescue you. Tommy Matola planted you firmly in the industry, didn't he? To get back at his ex-wife, Mariah Carey. And your career has just gone from sort of bizarre, underwhelming strength to strength ever since. And I've had so many men before in very many ways. How many great songs has J-Lo had? Great acting performances. <laughs> it's one of those people I'm like, how? I, I don't get it. How are they so big? Lopez received questions about Diddy. Lopez often described Diddy as a friend and mentor in interviews that admittedly played differently through a modern lens. He helped me a lot. He was kind of like a mentor in a way. Um, not a mentor, but like guided me. You know, right. he was, it, you know, he had a rough way of doing it, but he did, <laughs> yeah, he did I didn't, guide me. I didn't. Still, one can see how Diddy influenced Lopez's career and business instincts. Like Diddy, Lopez Kamala Harris gets it. You can say that again. She sure does get it, old Kamala. Uh, she's had somewhat of a rough ride to the top herself, hasn't she? Raised by a hardworking mother in Oakland, California, working long hours. Oh, for fuck's sake. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I was raised as a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up. In the middle class. My mother was hardworking. She raised me and my sister, Maya. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Raised by a hardworking mother. I was raised by a hardworking mother. My mother, you know, worked hard, raised me and my sister. And I don't know. That sounds a lot like my upbringing. And probably many of yours. Well, that does resonate with me somewhat. You know, I did grow up in a sort of a working class area and raised by my mother. But uh, she wasn't hardworking. Lazy, lazy woman was Motherkin's bone idol. And I don't get this romanticizing about the working class and the middle class, about how they're all, you know, uh, breaking their backs. Everyone I knew was, well, they weren't doing shit. I wanted life to be sort of more rough and romantic. I tried my hand at construction work when I was about 18, but uh, I was a little too old school for their liking. They were all, put your hard hat on, get your fluorescent jacket on, you'll need earmuffs or you'll get chill blains. I was just there in my flat cap with a fag, shirtless, carrying bits of scaffolding with no harness. I tried sitting on the beams like those guys who built the uh, Empire State and they just, you know, they just called the police, of course. There with the megaphones. Don't hurt yourself. It's not worth it. <laughs> Kamala Harris gets it. But I gotta ask you about Kamala Harris. How you feel about her? She's a piece of shit. I know as president of the United States, Kamala will fight for our freedom, the freedom of immigrants and immigrant families to chase the American dream. Oops, I said the quiet part loud and the loud part quiet. <laughs> oh dear. The freedom of workers to afford housing, education, food, and life's essentials, and the freedom of women to choose what we do with our bodies. She belongs to the streets. I believe in the power of women. 
the power of women. Yeah, if this were a play now, it, it would say in asterisks, scoffed. He scoffed. I'm scoffing at the power of women. It's like what Mike Tyson says, uh, everyone's got a plan till you get uh, smacked in the mouth or whatever. But I, I've got a, my own version of that saying. I say, uh, everyone believes in the power of women until Skeletor... By the power of Grayskull. And you, and you, and you. It's about us. All of us. No matter what we look like, who we love, or who we worship, or where we're from, her opponent, on the other hand, doesn't see it that way. He has consistently worked to divide us. At Madison Square Garden, he reminded us who he really is and how he really feels. It wasn't just Puerto Ricans that were offended that day, okay? It was every Latino in this country. Uh, first of all, J-Lo, as an honorary uh, Puerto Rican, you should know that uh, they prefer to be known as the Latinx community. And actually, you're wrong. They might not have all been offended, all of the Latinxes, because according to Joe Biden, who did some extensive uh, field work with the muchachos, he found that they were a much more diverse bunch than we had once thought. They had much more complex interpersonal relationships and stuff, far more than the black community, according to Joe Biden. But most people don't know Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. Look, you, 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 I'm a lover, <laughs> okay? You guys know that about me. I'm a lover. It's funny you should say that, Jennifer. I've never really thought of you as a lover. No doubt, uh, though, love was the vehicle that you used uh, to uh, get to where you've been in life. But no, I wouldn't have ever described you as a lover. I'd have described you more as, uh, the, uh, I think, a, a climber, a survivor. Um, you know, uh, from Tommy Mottola to Diddy, you know? You got your foot in the door, you kept it jammed in there while uh, Diddy was shooting people in clubs. <laughs> and uh, then Affleck, of course, another guy of very questionable character, um, but uh, all the while doing your mediocre crap. Uh, shitty pop music, uh, rubbish sort of rom com -y films, and there you are, you know? So no, I didn't know you were a lover, actually. I would never have gathered that on my own. I am not a fighter. I am not here to trash anyone or bring them down. I know what that can feel like and I wouldn't do it to my worst enemy. You know, people have really got to get it out of their head that trashing people in public is such a bad thing, you know? Uh, saying what you think about somebody is, to me, far more refreshing than all of these diplomats uh, that slither through their careers like J-Lo, you know? And they save all their venom and their bile for the feeble-minded bellboys that they've got running around for them. Listen to all the stories, I can't be asked to go into this now, about how she treats the workers and the common people. She really isn't a great person, but oh no, you'll never hear her openly criticise Mariah Carey like Mariah Carey does to her. She'll just sort of hint at it like, oh, maybe she forgets or whatever, like she won't actually say say anything. Give me a thousand Mariah Careys before one Jennifer Lopez. Put that on a t-shirt. Hmm? Or even when facing the biggest adversary I think America has internally ever had. Bitch, don't lecture me on uh, judgment of character, right? Your track record includes uh, Mariah Carey's alleged abusive husband, Tommy Mottola, P. Goddamn Diddy, uh, then uh, you moved on to Ben Affleck, you know, who, not like the fun drunks of old, like Peter O'Toole and Oliver Reed, who you could probably have a laugh with. He seems like the snarkiest, snappiest, most arrogant little drunk uh, one would ever come across. Hmm? And, uh, and who else? Oh, I don't really have anything on this guy, but he's always giving me the creeps. Mark Antony. 
Uh. So you can take your advice and shove it! But over Kamala Harris's entire career, she has proven us, to us, who she is. She has shown up for us every day, for the people. And it's time for us to show up for her. It's time for us, it's time for us to all answer presente. Oh, and that's another thing. She can't speak Spanish. I don't know why I need to throw that in there, but I've listened to her try and get through the most basic questions in interviews. She really, she can't do it. Yeah, it's, it's really cringeworthy. She does this like whole Latina, like, oh, las mujeres, like that, you know? Uh, and it's, ugh. Uh, watch her interview with Shakira. Shakira's dying of the cringe. I, I, uh, anyway. I am an American woman. I am the daughter of Guadalupe Rodriguez and David Lopez, a proud daughter and son of Puerto Rico. I am Puerto Rican. Soy Boricua, carajo. Oh, God. Um, please tell me there are some Puerto Ricans watching this who get how cringe her pretending to be Puerto Rican is, okay? It, like, I've got Irish heritage, okay? Her coming out there and saying, uh, Soy Boricua, carajo! Right, that's like the most cringe shit I've ever... It'd be like if I needed to ingratiate myself uh, with the uh, with the Irish community, and I came out saying, Tap of the morning to you, right? Everyone would be... Everyone would die of cringe, wouldn't they? Why don't we die of cringe when people do it uh, with Hispanic or, like, black culture? Or and it's just as cringeworthy. If that isn't how you are in your everyday life, don't do it. It's weird. And I must insist, she doesn't speak Spanish in her day-to-day -day life. She can't. She's no good at it. I've seen her try. And yes, I was born here, and we are Americans. I am a mother. I am a mother, I am a sister, I am an actor and an entertainer, and I like Hollywood endings. I like when the good guy, or in this case, the good girl wins. Imagine getting this emotional and this worked up about a political candidate, about Kamala Harris, of all political candidates, a woman devoid of personality or likableness. I'm sorry, I, uh, you might be a Democrat, you might want to vote Democrats for whatever reasons, that's, that's great, uh, but uh, it ain't Kamala, that can't be the reason. You can't believe that over the last few months she suddenly stepped into her power! All right, she she ain't she ain't stepping into no power. She's fucking, she's awful, right? And uh, I get that some people uh, Trump rubs rubs them up the wrong way. You might not like anything about him. You might not like his policies. You might not like his attitude. I get that. For whatever reason, it doesn't bother me when somebody's openly sort of arrogant and uh, and slightly sort of uh, uh, narcissistic in the in the traditional sort of sense of uh, of someone who just says I'm the greatest. Uh, the economy was best with me. I, that doesn't bother me as much as these faux fucking sheepish. Oh, ooh, everything's so horrible except me. If only the world were as truly wonderful and sweet as I am. Those sheep in wolves' clothing. Wolves in sheep's clothing. <laughs> uh, those are the ones that really, I think, you've got to keep an eye on. Very wise words, eh? You know? Uh, I don't think anyone's ever made that analogy before. The, the, the point is, uh, Jennifer Lopez, what has happened in your life that, uh, that, that this is what gets you all worked up and teary-eyed? Really? Seriously? Nothing bad's happened to you. You never witness people getting shot in the face. Apparently not. So either she's genuinely really worried about the outcome of this election, which makes me think she's worried for herself for some reason. Or uh, she's just lived such a sheltered life that uh, this is the thing that she's hyper-focused on. And there are lots of people like that out there, you know. I'd like to think it's just her trying to stay relevant, but the uh, cynic in me uh, <laughs> believes she is really desperate for some reason uh, for, for, the, for the outcome to not be Trump, right? 
Are they going to cover up some of the Diddy stuff? People are saying she's fled the country in the last couple of days. I don't know if that's true. It'll be interesting to find out. Anyway, look, I think that's all I've got to say about Jennifer Lopez, uh, for today, at least. Um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have done, like the video, give it a like, and let the algorithm, the universe, know what a great time you've had. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you want to help out with the channel, God knows I need it. <laughs> and uh, thank you to all of you who have. Uh, you can join my Patreon. The link's in the description. And, uh, well, I'll see you uh, I'll see you in the next video, I guess. Goodbye. Well, I'm quite appalled <clears throat> and very nearly walked out.